Welcome to something to talk about tonight. A uh, person who I've been dying to talk to for several years now is our very first guest on our new season. We're at King's Restaurant in Timooning. We got a table load of food. We got great conversation. Come on back for this edition of Something to Talk About. Welcome to Something to Talk About. We are into our next season and we are still at King's Restaurant in Timooning and we have an abundance of food. I'm my friend Shirley Panera is here. She's a former uh, nurse with the Guam Memorial Hospital. N not a former, but a retired nurse retired. now. Mm -hmm. And so I said, what's like the worst food that you can eat and the best food you can eat? And all of it's here and it's all good. And we've got some kadu, you want some? So and we have keleguin and we have lumpia just for you. And we have, uh, uh, we have uh, dried Hi, beef. beef and of course fruit. Well, you don't want that. Yes. You don't want that. You want all the good stuff on this side. Well, how are you, Shirley? How's it going today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm, I'm saying how is it going today because your every day is like a retirement yeah, day, right? So yes. how That's are true. you? Every day is a great day for me. <laughs> well, you know, the thing retired. is that you were like one of the few people that got out in time. In time, yes. Because retiring from GMH is kind of hard to do, right? To do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was able to get out with my retirement being paid. intact the yes. entire thing intact uh -huh. the um the thing is that every day at this job we've uh one of our responsibilities is to call the guam memorial hospital and just to sort of get an idea as to how things are going overnight and uh -huh. over the years the policies have changed on how much information that you can divulge about the public information but sh but um Shirley was always this woman that I got to speak with on a daily basis. Sometimes early five o'clock in the morning, I would call her and say, you know, what's the condition of this? What's the condition of this person? You have really seen it all, haven't you, yes. up there? Yes. It's yeah. Guam's only, you know, public oh, hospital. Uh -huh. how, so. how many years were you there? I worked for GMH for 31 years. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So. How did you... How do you get? How did you get through those? Okay, just as a just as a nurse to see what you see, just your profession at all, because you're always taking care of people in their most. Yes. Especially, I worked in the ICU for 22 years. Oh man! So it's like that's half of my life yeah. in the inti intensive care unit. So it was rough, but since I am really into patient care, you know, I love taking care of patients. So I think that kind of helped. Tell me what. Is tell me what, uh, uh, how you became a nurse. Did you? Did you? Where did you get your your schooling first? Of all? Oh, I took my nursing back in the Philippines. Oh wow! I finished my nursing way back in 1979. Oh my gosh! So that's. How did you, is it different than going to school now? Did you have to go to school longer or shorter than the, than the, the process now? It's the same. It's uh, the same. Bachelor's uh, in nursing is still five years, so it's still the same. As okay. Now. And then, so all of your, was your experience first in the Philippines too, or? Yes, I just worked for one year in the Philippines, mm -hmm. but not even in a hospital. It was a, like a company nurse oh, okay. before I came to Guam. What was it about that? Because there were a lot of Filipino nurses that came to Guam. What was it about the, the you know, the trade, having Filipino nurses come from, from the Philippines like that to Guam? Well, I kind of like, I don't know why all of I came in 1983, mm -hmm. and at that time they offered, I came in on a student visa that was like offered by Guam because they needed nurses in here. But did a lot of a lot of nurses do the same thing? Uh, now from, from the Philippines? From the Philippines. Yeah. Now they're, it's mostly working visa now. Oh, they okay. don't uh, offer any more student visa. Oh, okay. So what was it about that time when you graduated? So now we're in the 80s when you determined that that you found out about the opportunities in Guam. It seems like a lot of nurses that we have in Guam now, and especially a lot of the, you, Selly, for example, uh -huh. a lot of you came from the Philippines. Philippines yeah. What was it, was was that thing to do, like get your education in the Philippines and then move to Guam? Move to Guam, yes. Because the reason why I think is like most of our relatives were here back then. Yeah. So they know that we needed nurses in here. So like when we were there, they said, Oh, surely, or, you know, most of our relatives, they say, take nursing because once you finish nursing, we'll help you out to come out here. So, so I think that's but how it So it, it was, you never really wanted to work in in the Philippines? I mean, when you were going, 
Was it the, the, the job always, the, the opportunity was always to come to Guam, not stay in, in the Philippines? Not to stay in the Philippines, because I know the pay for a nurse back home is like way, a way, way Yeah, so it was mostly than, that. It was yes. mostly that. So when you yeah. came in, you had you came in on a student visa. So you must have been how old then? How old were you? Were you? I was 24 when I came here. Oh, so you were still really young yeah, then, a young lady. Did you have family on Guam? Oh, just my aunt was here. So when you had yeah. somebody to come yeah, to when you to when to. you came here. Uh -huh. All right, and so you just jumped right in to GMH? No, uh, we because uh, we came on a student visa, so the immigration uh, um, um, wanted is we have to enroll at UOG. So we enrolled, there's like 52 of us that came from the Philippines at oh the time. Oh my gosh. 52 nurses. Wow. We all finished nursing back home. Did you, did you guys all have somewhere to stay when you were here? Or did you uh, Most of us have relatives. Staying? Most of us had relatives. Oh, here, so that, yeah. that makes it so much that, different. Yeah. yeah. So and then those didn't have uh, relatives, they kind of like stayed like with me. I took two of my friends to stay with me. So okay. Share, yeah. So was the idea that you went and you got training in Guam, I mean, uh, training in the Philippines, then uh -huh. you would start to go to school here, yeah. I mean, go finish up at the University of Guam. Did did they already have jobs ready for you to get it, to slip into, or did it? Well, the reason why they took us is we had to enroll at UOG to, for the review for the board exam, Yeah. for the license. Yeah. And then when we passed the board exam, then GMH. Uh, um, hired you, right? Hired us, yeah. So on at the a time, visa. so at the time, were there many Chamorro nurses, or, uh, or were no, they actually when I came in, they already called GMH like a uh, PGH, the Philippine General Hospital, because <laughs> there's more <laughs> Filipino nurses than Chamorro oh, wow. nurses. That's why they always say, "Oh, this is like Philippine yeah. General Hospital." So how how many how many nurses that you guys came over with in the '80s are still here? Oh wow, there's only. Five of us now. Oh, really? Yeah. Did they all retire or they all moved on no, somehow? No, most moved uh, to, the, to States. the States. Yeah. And some, the ones that didn't pass the board exam, they went back. To, to the, the Philippines. Philippines. See, yeah. now that's the other thing that, that, mm. that even Guam Memorial nurses were finding at a, at, a certain, at, a, at a point in time that they were all leaving Guam to move on to the mainland uh -huh. because the, when the pay was a really big issue. Remember, I know that the nurses' pay has always been an issue uh -huh. at Guam Memorial so Hospital. Memorial. But there was, wasn't there a point in time when it was, there was a heavy recruiting period uh -huh. from the mainland for nurses to go over there? To go to the mainland? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Because uh, some of my co uh, co-workers, uh, when they found out, because uh, like they offer like a uh, recruitment fee, I mean recruit, uh, sign up fee. Yeah. Like when you go there in the States, they'll pay you this like 5,000 bonus. So yeah. we had some nurses that left because they, of that. How come yeah. you didn't go? Uh, my plan was when I found out that Guam has the best retirement plan, Oh, that's the one that, that was like what, that the, was the thing the that thing attracted that, yeah, you. Yeah, because it's like I, you know, everybody was talking about retirement in Guam is uh, this, and if you stay, so I'm so happy and glad that I did not leave because now I'm comparing it with my other nurses that are back in the states. They said, Shirley, you're so lucky, you retired and you're still young and you're enjoying. Yeah. And you have an emergency said, call. Oh. <laughs> 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 it's okay. The No, 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 it's okay. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, yeah, just Never go ahead. Later. You want to talk to the person? Go ahead, guys. Hello. Go ahead. I'll just wait. I'll <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, I'm, yeah, like, I'm uh, she's being interviewed. Right now. I have, I have an interview really with Patty Arroyo. Very important. <laughs> well, while you're Can doing you that, I'll have a piece. Uh -huh. I'll have a break. Well, anyway. Oh, wow. Shirley is an important we're off camera, right? No, we're still uh -huh. going. Oh, call, call. Shirley um, is a retiree. Oh, she's a retiree from the Guam Memorial Hospital, and the point is that it has been very difficult to, to uh, retire from the Guam Memorial Hospital now because they've not been paying into the retirement system. So she's one of the lucky ones to get out. So now that you are retired, is it everything that you expected it to be? Yes. Yeah. So if you, so staying in that long has, has worked it's out for you? It's paying off, yeah. It's paying off because now I said, Shall I go back to work? But then I, I'm already getting this much. So I said, what else yeah. will I, you know? And then my children are finished. So I said, I think I'll just stay home and yeah. enjoy. But then, I don't know, after six months maybe, <laughs> yeah. I might, because there's a lot of opportunities out there. I know, that's why but I was always wondering why nurses like you, nurses like Sally, 
stayed as long so. as you. I mean, I know the retirement benefits in the end, but when the lure of bigger money mm -hmm. or working for um, more modernized hospitals on the mainland came, mm -hmm. it yeah. wasn't something that you found to be attractive. There, was it? Was there something about Guam that you thought you needed to stay for? I think because, like, I already hear a lot from my friends that are in the States. They compare how it is working here and back there. It's like it's a lot easier to work with a very small group in here. And it's like mostly Filipinos that you work with. Yeah. But not in the mainland. That is like you work with different cultures. It's harder. And yeah. You're working so. at different cultures and you're also working uh, under some pretty extreme can, you were working under some pretty extreme conditions at GMH. I'm going to mm -hmm. do this. We're going to take a quick break and eat some okay. stuff. Uh -huh. And then when we come back, I'm going to ask you about some of your like personal experiences okay. dealing with the sick in Guam. Okay. Shirley <laughs> Panera, she's, she's a retired nurse now. We'll be back. back. We're something to okay. talk about. Come on back. Your husband. Hi. <laughs> was that your Welcome back to Something to Talk About. I'm with Shirley Panera. We're um, talking about her time at the Guam Memorial Hospital. Shirley uh, retired from GMH. Uh, you were in, in emergency when, when you, by the time you retired, were you in, just in the emergency No, department? I was a house supervisor. Okay, but, oh, so years. you were all over the place. Yeah, you weren't necessarily stationed, but most uh -huh. of the years that you were there, you were in intensive care. Intensive care, yeah, yeah. 22 years in the ICU. Wow. That's a yeah. lot of that's a lot of time. Yeah. That's a lot of sick people that you tended to. Oh yes. <laughs> Did it? Can I ask you something personal mm -hmm. about that? Did you know, as a nurse in your profession, when you're dealing with, you know, people who are ill, mm -hmm. and how how hard is it, you know, to deal with your emotions about it? It, it, it? Was there some point in your career where the wall would go up and it was just medicine? Oh. Uh, well, at some point, yes. Like, okay, I'll just have to take care of this, you know. And but most of the time, it's like you get so emotional that all you care is to get this, uh, you know, patient in your hands get better. Yeah. Because you think of them as like your family. Like, if it happened to my family, what shall I do? Mm -hmm. So. But in, but in intensive care, you're also dealing with a certain number of beds because there are not a lot of beds there, right? Yeah. Well, so a lot of the care... There's a lot of beds actually, but there's not much nurses to take care of this. Oh, That's yeah. why we always cut down our census. Oh, I see. Yeah, because we don't have enough uh, ICU have trained nurses that can take care of ICU. So. But when but in the ICU, it's, it's, a, it's the same number... The, the people who are there are there for a longer period of time. Um, or well, the, or while you, I was there, uh, it's like, actually, the like it's, it's like average, it's like every three, four years, the staff changes. Okay. And there's just still just a few of us that's been there for all the time. For all the time, yeah. But the, the length of stay for the average patient in ICU, is it, oh, what, is it usually patient. just several days? Uh, or is it, do you have long, sort of longer term? It depends on the cases. On the, on yeah. the cases. Some, it's like in two days, they get out, or just like they get admitted today, they get out, yes, yeah, yeah. like tomorrow, yeah. yeah. There are some also that's months. Yeah. In the ICU. Depending, so depending on, depending on, depending on the case, situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've always heard, and I, I don't know if this is true, but I've always heard that in this profession, in this profession that you're in, that it's, that it's harder to deal with patients who are children than any other patient that you that you see, is it harder to deal with children as patients, or is it is it all sort of the same? Well, I can, because in the ICU it's adult. The one that yeah. I handled was right. adult, so all our patients were 17 years old and above. Okay, they were all adults, but in yeah. but just generally in the profession, is it was it was for there me? A, yeah, it is harder for children because. For kids, they cannot tell you what is their problem, what's yeah. wrong with them. At least for adults, you can say, okay, where's the pain, you know, what's going yeah. on, how do you feel? They can tell you. So that's a big difference for yeah. me. Yeah. A lot of the, the problems at the, the hospital, and this is information that everybody has. I mean, and you were in the trenches, so you know. Uh -huh. They had a lot of challenges. As long as you've been there, would you? is it fair to say that GMH has always had some challenges? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, with I think patients. Ever, since, ever since I started, there's always challenges. Yeah, yeah. there's always been, and, but yeah. it's mostly the financial troubles that GMH financial has had. Financial troubles, yeah. yeah. I think 
ever since we started, it's like financial already. And up to now, <laughs> I'm out and I still hear financial problems. It's yeah. like, okay, what is new? That's why I just say, what is new with Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. So how did I, you how did you get through those times, especially as you rose to this level where you're you know you were in a nursing supervisor uh -huh. position? You had to manage and and keep motivating a staff that where there wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of backup. I mean, uh -huh. there were times I know that there were times when there were shortages of nurses, uh -huh. and you were trying to keep people on the on the floor. Uh -huh even past the point where they had to go home already, right? I mean, yes. was, you had to deal with nursing shortages. How did you how did you get through that period? Well, it was tough, uh, Patty, because it's like you're going to have enemies. You know, it's like being the house supervisor, I have to make sure that the whole hospital is staffed. And I'm not only, like, concerned about ICU or ER only. Mm -hmm. I have to take care of the whole hospital. So that was, like, a big challenge for me. Plus, especially, I work nights where your resources at night time is very limited. Yeah. So you just work with what you have. Yeah. So it's like um, planning on like, okay, if this unit needs an, uh, you know, help, where do I get other help? Mm -hmm. So you have to be resourceful. There have been a number of situations in this in our history in Guam where the hospital would have been inundated with large emergency situations. There's one particular one. I'm uh, Korea, the, yeah. the Korean Air. Korean Air. Yeah. Was that the largest number of patients that you'd seen in your career at yes. one time? Uh -huh. How many and people? How many people did Ooh. you have come through there? Because I was in the ICU at that time already. I think we dealt with like from you know from the simplest case because they that they brought to the worst case. We probably saw like eighty. 80 people. Yeah, 80 people. And this was yeah. 80 people being transported one after the yeah, other. One How after did you guys other. manage? Because that was GMH before this new emergency wing. Yes, right? the old and one yeah. where our beds was only nine. In the how did you room. how did you deal with that at the time well we already because we have this uh, code like when there's an emergency we already announced uh, code red mm -hmm. that's when more than 10 casualties are coming in mm -hmm. so when the code red was announced we already called everybody from nurses to doctors they already made announcement so before it happened everybody was there and that's where we can we really I really saw how the teamwork that everybody there, doctors, nurses, housekeepers, were all in there to help. So it made our work a Much lot easier. easier, yeah, so. Is uh, it sometimes then that it doesn't matter if the facility is adequate as much as it matters that the medical staff and the other s support staff is adequate? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, it's good that even though your resources are limited, if the staffing is, uh, you know, it's good, the teamwork is there, then it makes work a lot easier. Was that emotional after you were done? Oh yes, it was, especially working like 24 hours that day when we had that Korean air, because mm. it happened like early morning. Yeah. Yeah, and I was on duty at that time. And so that is, so you worked for 24 hours 24, straight, yeah. straight, straight to, uh -huh. to deal with the patients. Yeah. That must have been a really hard one. I was there at the crash on the other side. On so the, I mean, oh, I was on the scene of oh. that. Yeah. And and we saw the n numbers of ambulances that Coming you know, in, right? and uh -huh. I remember thinking, Naval Hospital can only handle so much, uh -huh. and a lot of these patients are going to have to go to GMH. GMH and yeah. I wondered whether or not GMH could handle the load. Yeah, well, we there, did good. <laughs> yeah, you did good. <laughs> what about the? There have been, I'm sure, other tragedies that, that we have had. Another, probably another most notable tragedy on Guam. You probably didn't see a large number of patients. Uh -huh. But it, it was probably a shocking scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, the the um, the stabbings in Tumon. Oh, that one, yes. Uh -huh. Was that was that a tough one too? Tough one too, yeah. Especially I followed, you know, uh, the outgoing supervisor on swing shift, and I came in at 12 midnight. So I kind of like, and they just started coming like 10:30 at night time. So I yeah. came in. It's like, well, I don't know what to do. But then I said, oh, it's you have surely get focus so that way. I'll be able to lead because I was like being a health supervisor. It's like I have to be the one that is yeah. on top of everybody. everybody. Yeah. So that. So you're dealing with 
something like th that traumatic anyway. Uh -huh. It's it's a crime that's never really happened on Guam before. Yes. So you're dealing with time. that mm -hmm. as a first time first incident. Time. Yeah. And then you're also having to deal with the patients that are coming through mm -hmm. and, and being focused on, on what you're doing is a big part of and that. The big thing with that too is like, it's uh, the translation because most of the ones that were endured oh, were right, Japanese. Japanese. So it was so hard for us to get interpreters. So yeah. To find that was that also wasn't. a challenge. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Has there <laughs> been any other situations that you can remember that, that stand out in your... Well, typhoons. Oh. Yeah. Typhoons. Yeah, the worst we had was the, the when I was already with Jamie, was the typhoon Fong San Hua, when we yeah. had like more than a week that we didn't had water. Oh, that's no right. Power, yeah. So you and had then to we had deal the tent with city. it. We call it the tent city when we had all those tents at the parking lot yeah. of GMH and we had to get, um, you know, oh off island gosh. help. Oh, I don't that's know if you remember right. I forgot that. It. Yeah, I yeah. For, yeah, I vaguely remember uh, that one. But uh -huh. just, were you nervous about that because the facility was also a compromised? You had no power, you had no yes. water, mm -hmm. and you had all of these patients. That must have been. Wow. And imagine our ICU was closed at that time because it, the water came yeah. in. So we went into the operating room. That's where we took care of our ICU patients. Oh no power. We were bagging the patients for oh my hours, gosh. alternating. You were providing your. Just manual, oh making the patient breathe manually. So we had to alternate respiratory wow. nurses. We take turns bagging the patient. My, how things have changed. Yeah. So do you miss it though a little bit? Well, I said I miss working with the people that I yeah. used to work with, but the job, I don't think <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> when you're done, you're done. <laughs> I and don't think, yeah, I, I said, <laughs> I'm done with my 31 years. I don't think I want to go back. I what know. I did for the last 31 yeah. years. I said, oh, let the well, I tell ones. you, it's a, it's a respectful <laughs> and it's a very honorable job that you did oh. for all of those years. And I think so many people who came uh, to be under your care uh, have, have been satisfied mm -hmm. uh, with your skills and your experience. So yeah, I'm so come. glad to meet you <laughs> finally after talking finally. to her every day for years and finally get this reunion. Thank mm -hmm. you so much for everything that oh, you uh, that you have time, done Patty. <laughs> anytime okay no, so she's bad. gonna be at red she'll be repeat all right I'm, we're gonna eat kadu now we're oh, here yeah. over at king's uh thank you for joining us tonight we're something to talk about thank you Shirley. Uh -huh. have no a nice problem. day <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> good job oh my god